we're walking up to the place that everybody's been talking about. It's called Frank and Son Collectible Show. It's Look a, at this. It's like the size of Costco. Yeah, it's or like an IKEA even. It's yeah. huge. So uh, I have a feeling this is going to be insane, and we're going to spend a lot of time here. So this is probably going to be our last stop because we're going to be here the rest of the day. Yeah, but hopefully we find something real cool. I'm excited. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, we are a gaming couple. We're married and we play and collect video games together. That's our thing. And uh, this series is our third part to our LA road trip. But before we get started, please do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. We're getting real close to 2000 and we'd love to hit it before 2022. And if you want to get notified when we make a new video, hit that bell notification icon and uh, you'll know right away. But until then, we are having our last final video for one of the most fun trips we went on in a while. And this one's a doozy. We uh, went to a few more game shops and we picked up some incredible stuff. We found some gaming grails that we didn't think we'd find on the road. And uh, we're gonna share that with you. After that, stay tuned to the end because we're gonna go over what we bought, but also we're gonna rank all the video game stores that we went to while in LA. From our least favorite to our favorite, they were all good. They all had their, their pluses and minuses. Um, but stay tuned for the end for that because that's going to be fun too. If you want to go to LA, uh, you're going to have a little bit of an idea what to expect and get our first impressions at least. Yeah, because you'll know like what the different game shops tend to offer and what some don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't go to all of them, but we went to a good amount and a lot for how little time we spent up there. So yeah, stay tuned. This looks like a convention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, found some video games. What'd you get? What do you see? There's a Lynx behind you. Uh oh. Oh no. Fleet and Box N64, Super Game Boy, Fleet and Box, everything. What I'm interested in is a Virtual Boy game right there. Some Metroid Prime Hunters. This is the best video game one we've found so far here. There's a Mystical Ninja. Later. Found some video games. Pretty good considering it's not vintage. Yeah. 225 bucks for the Battle Cat. That's awesome. Oh, wow.
we survived. So for the sake of brevity, we didn't record everything in there because there's just too much. So we recorded some of the major like video game shops we went to, we made some good deals, got some great stuff, and we are exhausted. Yeah, there's some trading cards, anime, uh, some toys, vintage toys. Figures, oh God, it's just so much. So, but we got great stuff, we're happy with it, we're starving, and we're going home. Yeah. <laughs> and that's all it was. I'm glad we didn't go there first, we were thinking of doing that. But yeah. if we did, had, we uh, probably wouldn't have gone anywhere else, and I'm glad we went other places and saw some great stores and met some great people. So it was, you know, all in all, just a wonderful trip. Yeah. Now to find some food. Found some food. It's pretty loud in here, but we're getting ramen. It's popular. How do you say ramen? Getting the ABC combos. So a little bit of food and then get on the road for a long time. So yeah. here we go. Food's here. Yeah. Mm. Everything's green tea. Let's eat. We have another four and a half hours of driving ahead of us. So we're gonna make the best of it, listen to some awesome chip tunes, video game music, and uh, make it home, feed the cats, crash. <laughs> crash. It, at home, in our bed, yeah, not, yeah. not on the highway. Not, not on that the would be bad. Very, very true. Yeah. <laughs> we get home safe. <laughs> we'll now we're on the 10, and the 10 is literally like, let's just go 300 miles that way. It, yeah, it's, it's basically a street shot home, which yep. is nice. I like that. So. Peace out, JRPG life signing up. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> Frank and Sons Collectibles. That place was wild. <laughs> I mean, an expo that's just always there. Yeah, open three days a week. It's crazy. So we didn't expect that, but we had a blast and we bought some crazy things there. The first thing that we bought that you saw us buy, uh, well not the first thing, but the most important thing we bought that you saw us buy was actually an Atari Lynx. It's our first one. We don't have it right now because when we brought it home, we realized there was a little bit of button mapping issue on it. So we have a friend that is going to refurbish it for us because there's like dust behind the screen and the buttons were um, not super responsive. So he's working on that for us and then it'll be in our collection. Yes, it works great otherwise. And he feels pretty confident it's gonna be back up to snuff. And you know, we paid a hundred bucks for it. Yeah. Which is a great deal because it's and it came with California games, which is worth like two dollars. But you know, it came with a game. It gives us something else to collect for too. Oh uh, yeah, that's all we need. But no, we're super happy to get it. Other things we picked up, uh, we picked up. We wanted a clean copy of Mario World, Mario All Stars, and we finally got it. It was marked for forty. The guy was super nice. He had like maybe ten video games at his shop. Yeah. And he gave it to us for thirty-five, which is fair for a clean copy. Uh, this one I was super excited about. We've tried to pick this up before in the past, but it didn't end up working. Mm -hmm. um, this is Baktai, The Sun in Your Hand. So this is the RPG on the GBA that you had to bring outside to charge your power. Yeah, it so... It literally has a sun uh, solar panel in it to charge. So it's, it's light versus dark, right? And your main character charges its... Uh, gun with the power of the sun and so you, the idea is that you actually take it outside and it will refuel your your gun ammo it's awesome and uh we paid 100 bucks for this which is fair yeah it's it's not it's not a cheap game no, but it's one we wanted and especially in this clean condition the label's beautiful yeah it's like it's, it's really perfect nice. they even let us try it try the game out before we left yeah that same little shop um we picked up a couple of Vita games we needed for the collection. Uh, we had them already, but we had them loose. So they had them complete. We wanted them complete. Uh, DJ Max Technica Tune. Um, this one is becoming harder and harder to find. And uh, it turns out they wanted a little bit too much for it, but we got a decent deal. We bought this one and Lost Dimension for 100 bucks for the combination of them. So both of these are condition upgrades. Yeah. We didn't have cases for either one of these. This brings us down to about five loose Vita games that we have left. Yeah, if that. If that, might be less. So, um, so we need Super Monkey Ball, right? Banana Com Blitz. Um, complete. Mm -hmm. And what were the other two? Uh, Lego Blitz. Ninjago Shadows of Ronin. Yep. And um, we do need a quality upgrade on Valhalla Knights, and that's it. I mean, if you count Arno Surge. Yeah, right? that's Which, true. I mean, 160 bucks for a loose game is we, fine. We certainly did not see Arno Surge at any of the places that we went to. No, we did not. So I'm yeah. I'm happy with our, our printed 
cover mm -hmm. for now. <laughs> While she's grabbing it, we did pick up this other cool thing that's kind of video game related, but at the Atari Lynx um, shop, we actually picked up Panic Bomber for video for uh, Virtual Boy. I don't think they even knew that they had a Virtual Boy game there, um, but it was literally just hidden in the stack of all the um, Game Boy Advance Clayton Box games. So this one they charged us 45 bucks for, which is fine. Um, you all know that we just picked up a Virtual Boy, so we're excited to add another one to that collection. But yeah, Panic Farmer with a manual in case. So there's a lot of shops like this. And um, we needed new coasters, but now we bought too many coasters. Um, so we did a Studio Ghibli set. Yeah, Totoro. Totoro, more Totoro, more Totoro, more Totoro. <laughs> and Cat Bus. <laughs> also from Totoro. Yeah. And then, uh, oh man, so my favorite anime is actually Initial D. I know, it's not the coolest or neatest anime, but it's my favorite. It's one of the first ones I watched that really got me into anime. <laughs> After you watch this video, go listen to some uh, Eurobeats. Go listen to some Eurobeats, and yeah. that's what's like on perpetually in our car. So, those of you that know Initial D, Akina Speed Stars, very cool. Um, we got Moogle, which is great. Which is, you know, kind of our thing. Yeah, our wedding was themed after Moogle, so that's awesome. Well, Final Fantasy. Yeah. Tonberry. We got Cactar. And Chocobo. We honestly just needed new coasters, so it was kind of nice. And uh, is, so. Isn't this one Mortal Kombat Dragon? Yeah, it is, but it's Dragon. I thought it was cool. And then I wish they had all the elements, they didn't, but Magic the Gathering. And then White and Black. Those are the only two they had, but I still wanted them because they're sweet. Um, and then a couple other things. They actually had a lot of Magic the Gathering booths, so I picked up Sensei's Divining Top. What was crazy is this is a $60 card and they charge like eBay prices, which is like 45 bucks. So super happy to get that. I think he only charged you 40 too. Could have been. And then um, last but not least, we have this sweet, fast car that we use for travel. Mm -hmm. It's a Scion. It's a little tiny white Scion. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's fast. It's not at all. It has 105 horsepower, so it is the opposite of fast. It's pretty sweet, Yeah. regardless. So of course, what do you need when you have a white little manual transmission car? You need Initial D stickers on it. So yeah. got an Initial D sticker, Akina Speed Stars for it, and then the best one, Fujiwara Tofu Shop. Don't That's spill awesome. the tofu. Do not spill the tofu. Rotate it in the cup. <laughs> that was it. What's your favorite pickup from Frankenstein's? Mm, um, Baktai. Baktai? Easily. Yeah, uh, this is up there. I'm going to say for me it's the Lynx. Yeah. That's uh, pretty sweet. We, It's the version 2 Lynx, which is great. You know, it was more modernized. During our trip to LA, we covered eight video game stores, and one of them is one giant video game store. We're going to count Frankenstein's as one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's one experience. <laughs> we're we're going to rank based off of our personal experience, first impressions uh, from our, our trip. And we're starting from eight being the lowest and one being our favorite. Mm -hmm. We're going to rank them in, in like three ways, right? Uh, first one would be the inventory. Yep. Uh, next one is the staff. Um, and then the last one was, you know, would be like atmosphere. Yeah. And atmosphere, you know, can be, you know, vibes in there, if people are having fun. Um, just in general, if it's clean, if I want to be there, you know, if it feels welcoming. There's a lot to atmosphere. Yeah. Like and You guys know, we all shop in video games, right? video game shops, and when you're there, if you don't feel comfortable there, you leave. And if it has a bad atmosphere, if people are being rude or whatever, you yeah. just... Mm. You, you don't want to spend your money and you want to take off. Yeah. We did try to buy something from every store that we went to, um, you know, because these are local businesses and they need to keep the lights on. Yes, so. for sure. So starting with the bottom one, number eight. Number eight was Game Hogs. Um, game Hogs, they had killer inventory, right? Insane you, inventory. How many times, comment below, how many times have y'all walked into a store that had three complete in box Pokemon boxes sitting on the shelf there to buy? Stacks of uh, Sega Saturn and Just Sega incredible. CD. Yeah, well it turns out the reason they're game hogs is because they're hogging all of them and they won't sell them. 
So their inventory was great. Their staff was nice. Yeah, their, their yeah. staff was very, very nice. The atmosphere was good, right? They, it was, they had great music going. They were talking video games, talking shop. It was quite unorganized and dirty. Yeah, so they had piles and piles of games, which is cool, but you know, it's, it's difficult to like look through the inventory if you just have like a stack this high of Super Mario World and you're trying to see around it. And uh, the, the back room was definitely a uh, work in progress. Uh, yeah, I would have liked to look through the shelf for a couple PS3 games I wanted, but you'd have to look at every single game to determine because there was no order. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't alphabetized at all. At all. So in terms of those, you know, it was fine, but we're going to add a fourth category of, of, of meter just for this shop is the price. Um, everything was well above price charting. Um, usually double and they didn't want to negotiate any of it, it unfortunately you know sometimes it's a red flag if you see just incredible inventory it's probably because they're asking double ebay prices or they're just way too high more and I, you could tell he was a little uncomfortable giving the price because when i'm like would you take 500 you know when he started to price it out he went to the back room and hid so his so the staff had to tell us about it and um you can tell they're like, yeah, it's six fifty. Um, you so know, it's hard to find, and you know, it is what it is. If they can sell it for that to somebody, by all means. I just don't think it's our gig. Yeah, and that's definitely something we would have, you know, spent the money on. But you gotta be reasonable. We we, we know prices pretty well because we're collectors, yeah. you know, and we want a fair price. Yeah, just be fair. We're okay with paying a little above pressure. Yeah. So number seven. Um, so I kind of feel bad for raking this one this this low because technically uh, Desert Island Games was more of a repair shop. Yeah. And the the guy that worked there was super nice. Great guy. Seriously. He didn't, he didn't want us filming in there, which is totally fine. Yeah. No problem. We asked permission of every place we went to. Yeah. Um, but he gave us some recommendations on some other places that he recommended. And um, repair guys and just a lot of things. And he had a little bit of you know stock there. We bought a we bought dope pond from him. Yeah. So you know very small selection, great staff, um, good atmosphere, but you know it was a little too small to allow for. You know, <laughs> That's why it. it's on the lower side of the raking. But otherwise, it'd be much higher in the raking. Yeah, for sure. So number six was Game Tower. Game Tower was similar to Desert Island Games, a little bit more selection um, for sure. Um, it was very small, but they still had a decent and clean inventory. It was well organized, had a good PSP selection. And again, very nice staff. Very cool dude, yeah. Honestly, like, th these guys were both great. Um, good atmosphere, people went in there and they shopped and they, they you know, looked us up. This was a place that you couldn't get your hands on games as well. There was a glass in front of you and the shelves across the shelf that you could look at, but you couldn't pick up and touch and play with anything. And I get it, you yeah. know, it's, it's LA. There, there's not a lot of good you know, places in LA. I, I'm sure it's to just prevent uh, theft, but also it helps to keep the games clean themselves. Yeah. And everything yeah. was clean in that store, which was yeah. nice. And it was easy to shop. Yeah. So, great. So number five? Um, gameplay. Now, we have actually been there before. It was um, like the only one we went to three years yeah. ago when we were in LA. We kind of didn't realize that we had already been to this one, but it was one that we stopped by on our way out of town. And um, this was another kind of like mini game hogs. They had some very nice things, um, but um, they were a little priced too high for us. Yeah, they had some Game Boy games we were looking at that were priced double price turning, but we picked up Pure Solar here for yeah. a great price. And and that was right on the money, yeah. you know. So very nice staff, um, good size inventory. It was well organized, um, nice atmosphere, easy to find, um, but pricing was kind of inconsistent. There were some high, some fair. Yeah, and... That's what we remember from three years ago as well. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, we're putting Frank and Sons as number four. The whole collectible experience. Because it was um, basically a convention. So there was a lot of little booths as you might have seen from our footage and it was like individual kind of mini stores mm -hmm. inside. Yeah, the great size inventory, obviously, right? Because there's yeah. a lot of different vendors and probably changes regularly, would be my guess. Yeah. Um, everybody was pretty nice. 
Um, we didn't have any problems with anybody yeah. at, except at there. Except for the toy shops. Oh, except for the, to the last toy shop we so went tell, to. Tell us about your vintage toy experience. Oh man. So uh, I'm I'm on the hunt for some vintage She-Ra, especially Mermista from the 1986 toy catalog. I'm pretty sure that's the last one that I need that will complete my childhood set. And I didn't see anything until we were ready to walk out the door. There was right a, there. a toy yeah. vendor right near the exit. And um, I was also looking for some um, Masters of the Universe original line uh, for family as well. And they, they had some of those things. And they had many, many, many copies of the same doll or toy or action figure. And um, the condition was not matching their prices. No, I had- And he wasn't willing to negotiate at all. Yeah, you know, the, the lady that was helping me, she was an associate. Her, her boss was not willing to budge. There was two Mermista dolls and one had the skirt and one didn't have the skirt and I asked if I could put the skirt on the one that's in a little nicer condition. And, and he, the higher price? he wanted to charge me more than the higher price. And again, you can get the same one online in better, more complete condition <laughs> for like less. At, like it was missing the shield and the, the shell was not complete. And he I, knew that. I Googled like right there on eBay and found one in near mint condition, just out of the box with the comic book all accessories, the hair was much nicer, not faded, and the skirt for less money than what he was asking. So here's the thing, we know that you can't compete with online prices. Yeah. We know you go to a place like this, you get expo prices, we get it, but let's come to a fair, you know, terms. He did not want to budge. So, and, and people should know, like when you go to an expo, usually most of the good vendors are gonna be willing to work with you and they just weren't. And that's that's a shame because we would have bought some stuff, but you know. Yeah. And we would have paid higher than, I mean, what eBay was charging for a lot of these and still would have bought it, but that's okay. You it, know, it's you know, a shame. And it is honestly some stuff that I haven't seen out here locally. We don't have a ton of toy shops out here mm -mm. that sell retro toys, yeah. but you know. So this is our number four because it's basically an expo. You, you go here, there's a lot of places that are selling stuff that they don't want to sell, or they're showing stuff off that they yeah. don't want to sell. I guess it's to attract customers. But maybe? video games was maybe, there were video games maybe half the shops, and amongst those, about half of them had a good selection. It was still really fun though. Oh man, it was a blast, I'd still go back. So our third video game store that we liked was Game Dudes. They had a great inventory. It was kind of set up like a warehouse mm -hmm. in some ways. Um, of course, you were blocked off. Um, everything was either in the glass or behind the glass. And they had way too many employees. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, they probably had like 10 people working there at least. <laughs> like every, like, we were probably there, were we there like two hours or probably so? Probably about two hours, yeah. A about every five minutes, a different employee would come by and ask us like, do you need any help with anything? Can I help you with something? Can, Can I help you something? with something? Which is fine, but it felt kind of like a GameStop. Yeah. But a little better because they were selling retro games. Yeah, and they're they're a little um, offstandish and pushy. Yeah, and, here's the thing. They weren't the most friendly. We don't mind, we get it. You know, I worked retail for a long yeah. time and it's not fun. Same. So we don't really care. Um, that's why they're ranked so high. They, they were amongst, amongst all the shops we went to, they were the least friendly but they're still third, right? Because they had the best inventory. Best inventory. And the best prices. Yeah, the prices were really good. Yeah, couldn't believe it. So, and people said that too. They said, go to Game Dudes. Um, you're gonna get some of the best prices and selection in town. Um, it wasn't a very personal shopping experience is what I would say. <laughs> yeah, and- It's uh, very transactional. When they were ringing stuff up and I, I always watch, you know, the register like a hawk wherever we go, but I, I noticed that like the first thing they rung up, rung up like completely wrong. And they fixed it, they were yeah. good about it. So, you know, there were some shops, some people that were, you know, excited to be there and check out the stuff, but the employees didn't react to it. It wasn't a very engaging yeah. atmosphere, but it's still third. It tells you what we prioritize yeah. in game shops. So, um, so our number two, Number two and number one. Actually is also number one. We, we tied our other two shops. Um, my favorite 
was World 8. World 8 was one of the smaller shops, right? It was in Little Tokyo. Um, World 8 had, the inventory was average. It was a smaller store, but they had a ton of imports. Yeah. Which we loved looking at and getting our hands on. And they had Wonderswan games and stuff. It was just, you don't see that stuff ever, but it was super clean, super organized, um, just right where it needed to be. The staff was the best. Yeah, I, I can definitely say that Curtis from World 8 was the best um, game shop owner, manager that we spoke with during he, the trip. He basically guided our, our light, all right? So yeah. we asked him to give us recommendations and he wrote down a list of all the other shops we could go to. And we went to all of them, but two, because we didn't get time to. Um, but this was our guide. Yeah. And this was like the most valuable thing on our trip. That would, we really appreciate that information of other stores that he recommended that he's been to mm -hmm. and he's had good experience with. Yeah, and you know, it's the atmosphere is obviously great because it was in Little Tokyo. Yeah. So people are coming in and out and ooh and eyeing <laughs> and they're looking at the Japanese games and looking at all this and, and it was it was great. I mean, all in all, my favorite place, it's the one I want to go back to the most. Yeah. But your favorite is also up there for me. Yeah, so my favorite is Game Realms. And I think part of that is because not only was there video game selection awesome the pricing was awesome mm -hmm. their staff was great mm -hmm. but <laughs> they had items they couldn't resist that are video game relating yes like the the art books and the, the music soundtracks and t-shirts and we picked hats. up some cool holiday gifts for family there too that were pretty neat so yeah they had some really nice stuff and um what, what's what's great is like the staff was multitasking and still having full conversations and sharing video game stories yeah. and hold, putting things on hold and upselling very, and just doing everything they needed to do. Very engaging. Very. And that's important. That's one of the things that's important to me. And the owner was cool. He was there. Um, he was busy in the back, but he was there and, you know, still helping flow traffic and all that. And um, yeah. shoppers were excited to be there. Yeah. So Game Realms, World 8, uh, right up there is our top. Well, they got a tie. My, my thing is the reason why I didn't rank World 8 on, as first is there's a lot of imports and I like to play RPGs and I don't speak or read Japanese. So yeah. that's kind of why I, I ranked it a little bit lower is because I want to pick up games that I can play and enjoy. Yeah. And we use, we pick up, you know, when we picked up Albert Odyssey 1 and 2, we're probably going to use a translation pack and play it on the Retron. Yeah, our, our Retron, um, you know, we just put a patch on the SD card and we'll be able to play that. And exactly. that's pretty awesome. So that'll be fun. And then we pay, play a lot of shmups and other ones that don't require and, language. And those were exclusives um, to Japan too. Yeah. So would we go back to LA? I, I think we would. <laughs> if there's a, if, especially if there's like an expo in town, like why not? I love to visit LA. Um, Only visit <laughs> and then leave after we're we can't done. afford to stay there. <laughs> no, no, nobody can. Not even the people who live there. Um, you know, the, I just like the, you know, the vibe out there, and um, especially when it comes to like LA versus Vegas, because for us, you know, those are two cities that are, you know, kind of splurge cities for us, right? Yeah, you go there to spend money. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite thing we picked up in LA in total? Comment below. Uh, do you have a favorite shop in the LA area that we didn't go to or maybe amongst the ones we went to is one of these your favorite? Have you been to any of them? Let us know. Comment below and we'd really love to hear your experiences from the Los Angeles area. So after our three-part series, you have to remember that the couple that drives to LA, goes to game shops, eats shabu shabu, stays in little Tokyo, drives in traffic, eats anpan, buys plushies, goes to more video game stores, finds a convention, eats ramen, and drives back home together, stays, stays together. together. Take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.